In this video we look at the removal of metal ions from wastewater and also the solubility product constant. Metal ions in wastewater can be removed from solution by precipitation in which the metal is removed as a sparingly soluble salt. So here are some examples. Mercury ions can be removed from solution by reacting with hydrogen sulfide gas which forms insoluble hydrogen sulfide. Lead ions can be removed also by reacting with hydrogen sulfide gas, so here we have the sulfide ion, to form insoluble lead sulfide. Chromium ions can be reacted with hydroxide ions to form insoluble chromium hydroxide. And aluminium ions can be reacted with phosphate ions to form the insoluble aluminium phosphate. Next we look at the solubility product constant, the KSP. The solubility product constant gives a measure of the solubility of an ionic compound. In a saturated solution, a dynamic equilibrium exists between the ionic compound and its aqueous ions. So here's an example. In a saturated solution, there's a dynamic equilibrium between the sparingly soluble mercury sulfide and the mercury ions and the sulfide ions. So for this example, the solubility product expression, KSP, is KSP equals the concentration of the mercury ions multiplied by the concentration of the sulfide ions. So next we'll try some examples. Wastewater can contain metal ions such as chromium. Chromium ions can cause damage to the liver and kidneys. Chromium ions can be removed from water by chemical precipitation using hydroxide ions. So part A of the question... Assuming chromium is present as Cr3+, state an equation for its reaction with hydroxide ions include state symbols. So here's the equation for that reaction. We have chromium ions reacting with hydroxide ions to form chromium hydroxide. And then part B, state an expression for the solubility product constant for chromium hydroxide. So Ksp equals the concentration of the chromium ions multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide ions raised to the power 3. And the reason we raise it to the power 3 is because the coefficient in front of the hydroxide ions is 3. So next we'll try part C. The solubility product of chromium hydroxide is 1.00 times 10 to the negative 33 mole to the 4 decimeters to the negative 12 at 298K. And you must specify the temperature because Ksp is temperature dependent. Next, calculate the concentration in moles per decimeter to the negative 3 of chromium ions in the solution when chromium 3 hydroxide is precipitated. So first we write our expression for the Ksp. So the Ksp equals the concentration of the chromium ions multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide ions raised to the power 3. So next we can put in the Ksp value given to us in the question. So 1.00 times 10 to the negative 33 equals the concentration of the chromium ions multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide ions raised to a power 3. We can give the concentration of the chromium ions the term x and the concentration of the hydroxide ions 3x raised to a power 3. So if you multiply x times 3x raised to a power 3 we get 27x to the power 4. So the concentration of chromium ions can be represented with 27 times the concentration of the chromium ions raised to the power 4. So because we want to find the concentration of the chromium ions, we can say that the Ksp, which is 1.00 times 10 to the negative 33, equals 27 times the concentration of the chromium ions raised to the power 4. So the next thing we do is divide this number here by 27, and that equals 3.70 times 10 to the negative 35. And then we can say that the concentration of chromium ions equals the fourth root of 3.70 times 10 to the negative 35. So the concentration of chromium ions equals 2.47 times 10 to the negative 9 moles per decimeter to the negative 3. In the next part of the question, we'll calculate the pH of a saturated solution of chromium hydroxide at 298K. So we've just calculated the concentration of the chromium ions and that was 2.47 times 10 to the negative 9 moles per decimeter to the negative 3. To calculate the concentration of the OH negative ions, we multiply this number by 3. 
And the reason we multiply this number by 3 is for every one chromium ion there's going to be 3 hydroxide ions. So that gives us a hydroxide ion concentration of 7.41 times 10 to the negative 9 moles per decimeter to the negative 3. So the pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So that's equal to the negative log of 7.41 times 10 to the negative 9. And that's equal to 8.13. Now the pOH plus the pH equals 14.00 at 298k. So therefore the pH is equal to 14.00 minus 8.13. So the pH is equal to 5.87. So next we look at another example. Compounds of heavy metals are one type of toxic substance found in water. Lead ions, which are Pb2+, can be removed by bubbling hydrogen sulfide H2S through polluted water. The solubility product of lead sulfide is 1.25 times 10 to the negative 28 mole to the 2 decimeters to the negative 6 at 25 degrees C. In part A, Calculate the concentration of Pb2 plus ions in a saturated solution of lead sulfide. So we can start by writing the equation for lead ions plus hydrogen sulfide to give us lead sulfide plus 2H plus. So in a saturated solution, a dynamic equilibrium exists. So we have lead sulfide is in dynamic equilibrium with lead ions and sulfide ions. So from there we can write the expression for the Ksp, so that's equal to the concentration of the lead ions multiplied by the concentration of the sulfide ions. And we can input the solubility product of lead sulfide, which is 1.25 times 10 to the negative 28. So we can do that here. And that's equal to the concentration of the lead ions multiplied by the concentration of the sulfide ions. So when no other ions are present, the two concentrations of lead ions and sulfide ions are equal. So therefore, to find the concentration of the lead ions, we can take the square root of 1.25 times 10 to the negative 28. So that equals 1.12 times 10 to the negative 14 moles per decimeter to the negative 3. So next we have one more example. Heavy metal ions can be removed from wastewater by adding hydroxide ions. When hydroxide ions are added to a solution containing nickel ions, a precipitate of nickel 2 hydroxide is formed. The solubility product of nickel 2 hydroxide is 6.50 times 10 to the negative 18 at 298K. Determine the mass of nickel ions that remains in 1 litre of water at 298K with a pH of 7 after the precipitation reaction has occurred. So we can start by writing the equation for nickel ions plus hydroxide ions to form the precipitate nickel hydroxide. And then in a saturated solution, a dynamic equilibrium exists between nickel hydroxide and nickel ions and hydroxide ions. So just like in the previous example, we can now write an expression for the Ksp. And it's equal to the concentration of the nickel ions multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide ions raised to the power 2 because we have 2 as a coefficient here. So next we can input the solubility product constant that's given to us in the question which is 6.50 times 10 to the negative 18. So 6.50 times 10 to the negative 18 equals the concentration of the nickel ions multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide ions raised to the power 2. So if we give the concentration of the nickel ions the term x, the concentration of the hydroxide ions is 2x raised to the power 2. So x times 2x raised to the power 2 is equal to 4x cubed. So the concentration of the nickel ions is equal to 4 times the concentration of the nickel ions raised to the power 3. So next we want to solve for the concentration of the nickel ions. So we start by dividing the solubility product by 4. And that gives us 1.63 times 10 to negative 18. And then we take the cube root of the answer we just calculated, which is 1.63 times 10 to negative 18. So the concentration of the nickel ions equals 1.18 times 10 to the negative 6 mole per decimeter to the negative 3. So the question was asking for the mass of nickel ions in one decimeter of water. So we have the concentration of nickel ions, which is 1.18 times 10 to negative 6 moles per decimeter. 
and then we multiply that by the molar mass of nickel which is 58.71 and we end up with 6.90 times 10 to the negative 5 grams of nickel in one decimeter of water.